Hey, it's the old man here, and it's cold. It was 72 degrees last week, not today. Um, just an update, I'm still walking, I'm still talking, lady's still good. Um, if there's no cases near you, get ready. They just put on the news today, you can't be on the road without proper authorization. It's getting serious. There was good news though, 46 cases in Skagit County and only six of them needed to be hospitalized. So that's good numbers. God help us. Um, but on a better note, got the good furniture, got some fresh straw, got the lady friend here, so it's story time. And a story it is. Oops. 20 years ago, they blew up the kingdom today, 8.30 in the morning. Um, it was a Sunday, I believe. Uh, I wrote a story, or did a story on the beginning of the dome and how we were used to be down there and hang around there um, two years ago maybe, so it's time to finish that up. Good things take time, and ladies pecking at me. Um, so, here we go. Hope you like it. Get my cheaters on like Homer Simpson. You know, I just did this video a second ago. It was all cool. I don't hear good. I can't hear shit. And the airplanes went over right at the crucial moment. And I'm like going, and the planes are flying over. So I got to really be hypersensitive about that. So here we go. The end of the dome, the grand adventure. All of this for 16.8 seconds. First off, I was against the fall of the dome. The public still over 200, still owed $250 million dollars and the experts said it was one of the strongest buildings ever built and should have lasted a thousand years. Only in America. With that said, when I heard they were going to level a dome, I told myself I was going to be there. I went to Seattle two days before the implosion to check out a good spot to observe. Um, I found the best spot near the old Veterans Hospital. As I was checking things out, I met a lot of excited people. Everyone had the same plan in mind, find the best view and claim their spot. Everyone I met also thought the end of the dome was a foolhardy idea, but like me, they wanted to see the last blast. I met people from all over the Northwest, Bremerton, Idaho, Aberdeen, and beyond, with the same thing in mind, finding that perfect spot. Yeah, I checked out West Seattle, Capitol Hill, Greenbelt, spent the whole day snooping around. Uh, finding the perfect spot. I went home with the plan of leaving at 4 a.m. Sunday to ensure to get our spot. Saturday on the 5 o'clock news, they showed people camping out already and near my spot. Hmm. The early bird will get the worm. I'm leaving tonight and camping out. I called a friend who had a history of being spur of the moment in our youth. Hey, Charlie, what are you doing? Nothing, he says. Let's go camp out in Seattle and watch them blow up the kingdom. A slight pause. Well, I'll call you. No, come and get me. The game was afoot. I threw together a few things, kissed the wife and kids goodbye, and was off. On the way to Charlie's house, I felt so alive and so pumped. I couldn't believe it, and it just got better. Listening for the airplanes. Um, I snagged my friend, and we were off. It was akin, I grabbed my friend, and we were off. It was akin to sneaking in our first rock festival. We knew what was going to happen and where it was, but everything else was just going by the seat of our pants. As we left town, we discussed the grand plan. Well, I said, either we can 4x4 four four up to this spot, or if it's blocked off, we may have to walk a bit. Okay, no sweat. Charlie and I discussed the moral aspects of trespassing on vacant state land and decided it had been 25 years since either one of us had been in trouble, so let's cast our cares to the wind. Criminal trespassing. <laughs> 
Uh, guess it could 10.30 p.m. Saturday night, we arrived at the spot. The green belt between the Veterans Hospital and I-5. That's southeast of the Kingdom, and it's up on a hill. It's a You can't miss it. Everybody knows it. I think it's Amazon. I'm not sure. Um, the green belt... We pulled off I-5, turned off the lights, and drove up a service road that ran parallel to the freeway. It's kind of going up a slope. No signs, no blockages, just wide open. We turned off the rig and held our breath. Nothing. No police, no flashlights, no nothing. We were ecstatic. We were in. From that point, we had a premium view of the dome. Well, this is too easy. Let's look around. We snooped around with our flashlight, and we see a cat trail going up the hill into the green belt, up towards the hospital up there. Um, we walked the road in parentheses. It was rough. It was a cat trail. Um, we walked the road to the top and met three guys with tents set up and a Coleman lamp burning. We met like old friends. Was that your rig that just snuck up the back road? Yes, I said. Good job, they all cheered. I told them we thought about driving up here. What do you think, lady? Hey, go for it, man. We'll spot you. Charlie and I walked back to the Subaru, which is the one I still drive, my Thrasher, and kicked in four-wheel drive. I've never gone four-wheeling by flashlight before, but within five minutes, we were parked on a bluff near our new friends from Kirkland, overlooking the kingdom and all of industrial Seattle. We let out a war cry. You to listen to that airplane. Um, let out a war cry and talked and carried on till 4.30 in the morning. It was the last time I drank booze. <laughs> 20 years ago. And before that, you know, I, I could say in the last 45 years, I drank maybe five times. It was an event. We met this guy from Kirkland. Hey, well, you guys want to get drunk? What do you want? Blah, blah. Opens his case up and there was uh, all kinds of beer and wine and blah, blah, blah. And Charlie was a non-drinker too. And we looked in there and settled on a, a bottle of butterscotch snobs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, between the two of us, it was plenty enough. In fact, it got to the point where Charlie goes, you know, we should let off. We could fall down and get hurt, so we, I don't even think we finished the bottle. But it was an event, and um, yeah, I, like I said, I don't like booze at all. Um, okay, settle down here. We all let out a war cry and carried on until 4 3 in the morning. I can hardly say I slept. With the anticipation of the next day and being 400 feet from I 5, we just sort of laid there. Um, we woke up at 6 o'clock, there was frost on my sleeping bag, and there was electricity in the air. Uh, come on, old man. There were people all over, and more coming in, like colonies of ants. It's hard to describe, and that's the only way I could describe it. It was people coming from everywhere, it's this mass flow. Uh, it appeared that everyone was, was as stoked as I was. Two more four-wheel drives showed up, one of them was a Subaru, and both of them from our neighborhood. And as we met and talked, uh, we heard this older man say to his son, you know, it must be something in the water up there to get those guys to be scrambling around in their rigs, clearly trespassing. It was fun. Then out of the clear blue walked up Neil and Bill, two good friends also from the neighborhood. More war cries. You know what I'm talking about. Oops, sorry. Um, at 8.15, the crowd was at its zenith. Then it got quiet. Really quiet. I-5 was shut down. People seemed to be whispering. It was so intense. Off in the distance, we heard a weird buzzing. And a brand new jet black Lamborghini came bombing down the freeway towards the dome all by himself. Some rich man who must have overslept, we suppose. At 8.30, we had heard the countdown starting, and we all went five, four, three, 
two, one, zero. Nothing. 20 seconds late. 20 seconds later, the short show started. My eyes were forced wide open as not to blink. It sounded like popcorn at first as the roof fractured. Then the huge explosions of the outside walls. You could feel it in your chest and down it came. And if you've never been around dynamite, um, you're a long ways away and you see the flash and then you hear the flash and then you feel it. Boom! Just right in your chest. And that's the way it was. A huge plume of dust went into the air, and a slight wind carried it downtown. Charlie got pictures of it. Uh, you could see Puget Sound and Capitol Hill, but nothing in between. Weird. What a sight. Yeah, it was like a... Yeah, explosion. We all hugged and screamed, and cameras popped off. You would have thought they just cured cancer. When the, dust, when the dust had cleared, it appeared to look like a fallen souffle. We stood around, but the mood had passed. As we drove away, I felt sad. No more monster truck shows. No more Seahawks or Mariners as we knew it. No more Kingdom. Just a rich man's dream come true. This may be hard. On a personal note that day, I watched the news in the replays. I had tears running down my face. What's this all about? It's just a building. Was it lack of sleep? Overwhelmed? No. It was an end of an era for me personally. No more taking the little kids to the kingdom. No more need to keep a close eye on them. It's okay. They have grown into good people that I'm truly proud of. It's just sad that the dome and my kids' youth ended on the same day. But I have three great kids. I have four grandchildren. I'm really thankful. So I think I'll make it. Thank you. Well, I hope you like it. Lady did. Yeah, I, I filmed this a second ago, and it was like, I can't hear shit. Take care of your ears. Um, so I hope this one's just as good. Uh, I have another story or two. I'm a writer as well. <laughs> I took notes as well. Um, and if you guys want to hear about it, I'll read it to you. Cough up some thumbs up though. Uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I was working with this guy and um, he worked out all the time and volleyball and all this stuff and, and uh, he had a heart attack. And I thought to myself, you know, I haven't taken the best care of myself and uh, I always wanted to go on a train trip, a big train trip. Um, so I told myself, I'm going to do it. And I did. It, uh, it was fun. I went from Everett to Chicago to New Orleans to Texas, California, and back home. It took, I don't know, three weeks maybe. Um, and it was cool. I had the best time. Um, and I got it all on paper. I was freaking out yesterday. I had this tablet for all these years, and it's like, well, I'm going to need to find that and, and read it over and stuff. I couldn't find it. I'm going, oh, man, if that's gone, I'm going to be bummed. But I found it, and uh, I'll do that. Um, and I'll keep doing more videos. It's, it's getting serious, folks. Um, in our county, there's 43 cases, and only six of them had to go to the hospital, so that's really good news. I'm so glad to hear that. I've, God help the six. Um, God help us all. It's, it's serious. Lady don't care. <coughs> yeah. You okay? Huh? You gonna bite me? She's a good girl. So anyway, the old man will be back. Um, 
Yeah, be careful and be ready. They said I saw, I've been, I quit watching the news six days ago. I know what I need to do. I need to stay home and I need to stay healthy and out of harm's way. And I glanced through on YouTube, I don't watch TV, and I read a little bit of the headlines and they showed a picture of um, the East Coast and then California, a couple places that internet went down so be careful uh, that would be chaos God help us you guys pray see you next time